Hello and welcome to Topros's Ultimate RuneScape 3 Saradome GWD guide. In this guide we will be showing you everything you need to know to effectively kill Commander Zuliana and her minions, whatever your level, stats, gear and experience, and whatever size team you choose to go with. But please note that this will be a magic oriented guide because magic is the best style to attack Zuliana with, although there will be a couple of sections on melee setups. You can click on the various sections on screen now to navigate to the bit you're interested in. Alternatively, you can watch the entire guide without pausing. Please note that some bits with lots of info on screen may go quite quickly, so uh, feel free to pause whenever you would like to go. So uh, let's get started. The Sarah Dome in general is called Commander Ziliana, and you can view some of her attributes in the background. Although she has no weakness now, as I said before, the best method of attack is to mage her, partly due to magic karma having the best combination of both melee and magic defense, which are the styles that Juliana uses to attack you with. Her, ma her max hit is pretty low, but she has a decently fast attack speed, so she can combo you quite quickly. Both her attacks are only usable in melee range, but she's immune to stuns. Her mage attack hits everyone in the room when she uses it, but I'll talk more about that in the tactics section. She also has three bodyguards, each utilizing a different attack style. They don't do much damage if you have good armor, but it is important to kill them as soon as possible after Zuliana is dead. If you're lower leveled, especially, uh, they will keep respawning if you try to kill them before Zuliana is dead, although you will naturally kill them a lot, especially if you use barrage spells in area of effect abilities. I'll talk more about that later as well. As for the requirements, well, there is only really one requirement to be able to actually enter the Serodomen area and boss room, and that is level 70 agility. But I would recommend that you have the stats displayed on the left as a minimum, an absolute minimum, if you wish to survive for a decent number of kills in a large team. With the stats on the left, you cannot be a tank and you must be an attacker, preferably for a large team as I said. The 50 defense and 50 magic requirements are to wield and wear batwing armor and batwing uh, wand. And the 43 prayer is uh, required to be able to use all the protection prayers. Level 52 summoning is a must for the spirit terabird beast of burden familiar. The stats shown on the right are for soloing for a decent number of kills and are the ideal stats. 90 herb law for Overloads, which need 96 herb lore, but you can uh, boost uh, from 92 to make them. 96 summoning for the Pakyak Beast of Burden, which holds 30 items. 95 prayer for the Torment Curse, and also you need to complete uh, a quest called the Temple at Centiston for this. And finally, 94 magic to be able to use Ice Barrage, the most effective spell on Juliana on, and her minions. It is highly advised that you do not use Bloodfire spells on her anymore because you will get this message and uh, she will simply be too powerful to kill efficiently if you do use them. Now there are a couple of general requirements to be able to actually enter GWD and these are listed in the box as you can see. You need to have gotten at least as far as killing the troll called Dad in the Troll Stronghold quest as well as having either level 60 agility or level 60 strength. The risk of death is high and getting back to your grave requires you to kill 40 monsters aligned to the god in whose boss room you died. So from experience, I highly recommend having the longest possible grave you can unlock or afford. And the best is the 15 minute grave if you get if you uh, complete the King of the Dwarves quest. Also, you'll need to get kill count quickly if you die. So have spare armor and high damage weapons in your bank. Obviously, this is probably only applicable if you're soloing because uh, I think... I would think, anyway, uh, that if you came in a team, they, they would probably bless your grave if you died uh, to make the timer one hour. But you need 70 prayer for that, and uh, keep in mind that they can't bless it if you disconnect and log out. Finally, I recommend having done the Ritual of Marjorat quest for access to the Glacier Cave through Fairy Rings. The, co the code is the DKQ, by the way. This is for a 4-hour combat stat boost that applies throughout God Wars Dungeon and can be very useful. As you can see, all you have to do is teleport to the Glacier Cave and you will get the boost, which is extremely useful. 
Hey guys, welcome to the roles and setups menu. Please feel free to select the relevant section to navigate to while I talk in brief about each of the three sections shown on screen. Now there are two distinct roles at Sarah GWD. One is that of tanking the boss, which means maximizing your defense so you get dealt the least amount of damage possible. The other is to deal as much damage as possible to the boss without worrying as much about your defense. As a low level though, you should only be a damage dealer, not a tank or else your trip will end in tears very swiftly. On to the tanking setup section. Okay, so this setup is for you if you're tanking the boss in a team or soloing in a well solo. You can see the list of items from best to worst for each slot on the left. Note that tectonic armor costs around 100 mil and the grades to nothing after 60k hits received so it may be a matter of choice as to whether you get that. Also note that Virtus boots and gloves are only recommended if you wear the mask top and legs as well for the full set damage bonus. Otherwise use static gloves and rage fire boots for the better defense. Finally I highly recommend a sign of life because it replenishes you if you die back to 25% health and it is very useful, especially for soloing, for example if you DC. As I said at the start though, the melee isn't recommended unless you're extremely experienced and familiar with the EOC, as well as having dry goals and maximum combat skills, but here is my typical melee tank setup if you insist on using melee while tanking. A shield for both maging and meleeing is essential for when you are low on food because you can tank for a long time while using the defensive abilities of a shield along with very little food so it can significantly prolong trips. As for weapons, obviously the ridiculously overpriced seismic weapons are by far the best but Virtus Book in Wand is also very accurate on Zuliana. If you're soloing melee tanking, dragos are a must for a decent length trip. If in a team you can maybe afford to melee tank with Chaotix depending on how quickly your team kills Zuliana so that you get dealt the least amount of damage possible. Oh and whichever setup you use you definitely need a Sarah item protection from the monsters and a Zami item is optional. If you don't have a Sarah cape I recommend just wielding one Sarah dome and arrow. Note that all next items except the Virtus wand and book give protection against Zami and Sarah monsters though. Okay, so onto the ability bar familiar and inventory setups. So the best familiar to use is a pack yak. You can only bring a beast of burden by the way, because it can hold a lot of stuff. And this is what mine looks like inside. As you can see, most of it is just rock tails uh, with uh, three cerebrus and super restore, just for emergency purposes. And also because one full brew flask uh, heals more than a rock tail. And also I've got a uni there just to prolong my trip quite by quite a bit actually uh, near the end after I run out of everything else uh, in my yak. So as far as my inventory is concerned I like to bring these two, the demon horn necklace and the ring of wealth. I like to switch to these two at the end of the kill uh, and also have a burn crusher. Now you need to note that the ring of wealth and the burn crusher only work in, L in FFA, they don't work in Hellos or CS is what I'm meant to say anyway. Um, so you may want to bank this if you're going in an LS or CS trip. Uh, you can use a Demon Horn necklace to restore some prayer points. If uh, if you get some bones, you can pick them up and uh, bury them manually while wearing this. Or you can uh, use a Bone Crusher, which will do it automatically if you're wearing both of them, which will restore prayer automatically. And this is really important because uh, if you combine it with Penance, you pretty much won't need any prayer potions for one hour the length of time that penance is active for. Uh, apart from that, well I've got shield. Uh, the best shield is uh, is Farsia Kite Shield. Uh, Arcane is also good but it uses up a lot of prayer pots so it might not be that useful. Uh, depends on your per personal preference but mine is Farsia Kite Shield. Uh, you use this if you are low on food or you need a lot of healing or you need to be in a defensive mode. And as you can see, my ability bar is catered for that. So I've got some defensive abilities there, uh, shield abilities. That's This is my shield maging bar, and this is my DPS maging bar. I like to use this when I'm using dual wield, regardless whether I'm tanking or DPSing. Uh, the three adrenaline potions, I, as you can see, I like to use these, as I'll show you later, to just boost my adrenaline after I use metamorphosis. Uh, bring enough overloads and pr renewals depending on how long you want to stay and also bring spare pouches depending on depending on how long you want to stay don't forget your teleport to house uh, emergency and also Trollheim teleport tablet which you can repair afterwards once you teleport to Trollheim and uh, finally do not forget well 
do not forget your and finally I wouldn't recommend bringing any winter storage scrolls because Sarah doesn't really drop any worthwhile items except for the, her unique drops which uh, you don't really need to bank so yeah that's about it for this section as for the major attacker setup your priority now is to maximize your damage per second on next so full virtus takes priority over anything else except full tectonic this time only whether virtus clubs and boost for the set damage bonus if you have all five pieces by the way Note that tectonic armor costs around 100 mil and they're greater nothing after 60k hits received, so it may be a matter of choice as to whether you get that. It is unlikely that you will die, so I wouldn't recommend a sign of life, rather uh, I would recommend using a magic oriented scrimshaw, preferably a superior scrimshaw of magic. There's not much more to say uh, than to use the best possible magic weapons, and don't forget your shadow dome and protection. All next items except the Virtus 1 and book give protection from all the all four GWD factions. If you want to melee DPS, by the way, it is easier than melee tanking, and uh, you want to max out DPS, so make sure to wear all five torpor pieces if you have them. You preferably need a very high defense for both melee tanking and melee DPSing, otherwise, you could get pretty torn by her magic attacks unless you manage to kill her really quickly, which does happen with Dragos. A shield is op optional for DPSing since you won't take much damage. Uh, to warrant having it but you can have it if you need to heal up a lot or go into a defensive mode. Okay so the DPS setup as far as the inventory familiar ability bar and so on are concerned well there's not much difference to the tank setup the mage tank setup except for the fact that it's better to actually have a healing familiar than a base of burden because you barely need to heal so if you have a unicorn bring it if you don't then uh, bring a I don't know, Spirit Pack Pig or War Tortoise, it's fine as well. Although with a War Tortoise, you you will probably have to tank, tank for a bit uh, because the Tortoise distracts Ziliana onto you, which is a pain. So uh, I wouldn't recommend having a Tortoise, to be honest, unless uh, you can spend the time to manually right click and set it to attack a minion rather than setting it to attack Ziliana. Anyway, the inventory is pretty much the same as the tank, as I said. Bring as many ovals as you want to last for a trip. Uh, bring as many spare pouches as obviously the set for the same reason. Uh, the prayer, it will vary depending on your prayer, real, prayer level and how much you use. And also, very important things. If you're doing free for all, I recommend you bring a bone crusher because it automatically crushes bones. And a demon horn necklace to bury those bones and restore some prayer points. And also, ring of wealth. Uh, if you're doing the most damage, then you'll probably get the drop in free for all. The Ring of Wealth doesn't work in LS or CS, and nor does the Burn Crusher. So I like I like to switch to these two at the end of the kill, so that I get the increased chance of getting a drop, as well as restoring some prayer points. And also I like keeping this on until I finish killing the minions, because they drop bones as well. So a shield is also required, uh, in case you want to do some extra healing or go into a defensive mode. And apart from that, the only important thing is an adrenaline potion, which is optional, I guess. Uh, it's not that important, uh, but food isn't really needed, so I like to fill up the extra spaces with these. These are used to restore some of your adrenaline, 25% uh, to be exact, exact per dose, and you can only use it once every 120 seconds or two minutes. So what I like to use is I like to use this ability over here, metamorphosis and then quickly use this so that I don't waste that on the 20 seconds and then uh, use the asphyxiate and wild magic abilities. I'll talk to you guys about that once I get there I guess. And this is my action bar for a DPS as you can see um, it's it's just building up from basics to thresholds and then on to uh, uh, ultimate. Uh, you don't really need provoke to be honest uh, but you can, uh, you can use something else there I guess anything else you want uh, and I'd like to I like to have my quick inventory on uh, one on prayer and one on food. Uh, that's about it. Also, this is my shield uh, ability bar. Not much, not nothing much important. Uh, resonance and immortality to heal and to well bring myself back from the dead and also rejuvenate. I like to use from my ability book when I need it. Okay guys, so welcome to the low level section of the guide now. 
First of all, let's look at the gearing setup. So one thing to mention is that low levels have to be attackers and not tanks. It's possible to be tank, but you really won't last that long and it will hurt you a lot. So uh, being attackers is really recommended. And um, one thing to note in the gear setup is that we use War Priest armor. Now you can get this from the Battle of Lumbridge, uh, both from the Zamorak side and the Saradoman side. So you collect points and then you spend them on the War Priest armor. So for the set effect, you have to spend, well, you have to use or wear at least three pieces of the armor for the set effect. Now, the set effect is that you have a 3% chance of getting a 10% damage reduction on what you are hit. So uh, it's a great effect for damage reduction. Uh, and uh, this War Priest armor is hybrid and, that, and there are three tiers. So we recommend the third tier uh, to use. Now, it also pro provides... Uh, God protection at God Wars dungeon, so either Zami or Sara protection, or both if you have a mix of the armors. Uh, but for actual damage, subjugation is best. And uh, a brief mention of the sign of life: if you die, it allows you, it heals you back up to, uh, I believe, around 3k HP or something, or maybe a third of H a certain percentage. But if you die uh, and derp, it actually manages to save you, and the item is used up. You can only use one per hour, though. So I recommend that for the low levels and Saradoman protection at God Wars is essential. Uh, Zamorak isn't, but it's recommended. So moving on to the weapons uh, in related to maging. Uh, for maximum DPS, I recommend a Staff of Light for the low levels. If you have higher weapons that are available to you, use those by all means. Uh, after that is a Polypore Staff and you can read down uh, so you can you can uh, look at those. Now, for shields, uh, spectral is highest, and what you really want to be doing with the shield is uh, resonancing, so you can heal uh, often whenever you need some HP. And um, the best spells are on ancients, but not non blood fires. So do not use blood fires on uh, Ziliana because she heals. So you can switch between shields and staff for a, uh, for a mixture between healing and DPS, and that is recommended. Now onto the inventory and ability bar setup. Okay guys, so moving on from the gearing setup to the inventory setup and the ability bar setup. So looking at inventory first, what you want are runes for your highest level spell. So here you can see I have runes for my fire surge. After this, you want your two-handed weapon so here I have my staff of light and you also want potions your highest level potions so here you can see I have my offensive super magic flasks now if you have higher bring those as for the defense flasks you can bring a Saradomian brew to boost you higher than the super defense however you have to drink a dose of super restore so that you can restore your offensive stats up and don't brew don't pot up before you brew brew first so that your offensive stats aren't drained therefore negating the effect of your boost so after this what you want is a familiar pouch now the tie between the familiar pouch and the super store flask is that if your points run out or go close to zero and your familiar timer is also close to running out you can drink a sip of this so that it boosts your summoning points and then you can renew it no problem now for the rest of the invent you want your hopping trick or uh, item dropping trick uh, that Zen showed you before. Uh, here you can see that I have only four laws because I also have the fires here. So what I want to do is I want to only drop one item and do the banking trick uh, as Zen described. So for the rest of the invent what you want are a mixture between prayer flasks or prayer boosting items and uh, food that is equivalent to your HP or constitution level because in EOC uh, foods of differing levels benefit different uh, players according to their constitution level. So find the food that is best for you and have an emergency teleport ready. Now as for familiar, it's probably better if you have a familiar that doesn't attack if you are a attacker because uh, that's also known as a non-aggressive familiar because 
this uh, causes Ziliana or the minions to turn onto you rather than the tank therefore making you uh, receive a lot more damage as for what's inside the familiar I just recommend you fill it with food now moving on from the inventory to the ability bar so here you can see the ability bar set up for the uh, wand and shield so I just put a load of basics right here at the start to build up my bar and then added, a, added in a couple of thresholds that deal lots of damage and an ultimate here so you can use this and then deal a lot more damage as for defensives just some defensives that help you heal uh, like this like immortality and resonance and rejuvenate as well as uh, debilitate which allows you to receive less damage now the ability bar setup is similar for your main hand staff uh, here you can see that it's just a load of basics so that you can build up your bar and anticipation uh, reduces damage you receive as well as some healing and uh, debilitate so you can reduce the damage dealt now moving on from the uh, uh, inventory and ability bars to the actual tactics of the boss there are three main methods you can use to get to the god boss dungeon you can see the requirements for each method in the background and I will go through each method now. The methods 2 and 3 are much faster than method 1 by the way so I would recommend that you get the requirements for those so that you can use at least method 2 if not method 3. Please note that you have to run a small errand after completing the love story quest in order to be able to use the Trollheim teleport tablet. For method 1 you will need to follow the path shown from the birth of Bloodstone or Troll Invasion teleport using Games Necklace. You will take some damage though from the trolls so I advise bringing some food, well you have to bring some food anyway to be able to fight the monsters inside GWD and also bring protect from ranged. And also don't forget your climbing boots because you will need them for method 1. Just follow the path I take, past dad and into and out of a cave. Then finally to the boulder where you either squeeze past or lift it depending on whether you have the 60 agility or the 60 strength requirement. If it's your first time quickly talk to the dying knight before you go into the dungeon because uh, you need to do that before you go in otherwise you won't be able to go in and do this quickly because the area drains your stats and hits you constantly. Okay for the second method which is the trollhide teleport method people often use a method called the drop trick which is where you drop two items so you don't lose any inventory space I'll just show you guys so you simply have four fire runes and four lore runes and then teleport to Trollheim as I am doing drop two items, any items from your inventory preferably something lower value in case uh, someone else gets it which they probably won't make sure you have a quick teleport to a bank wielded or something so like a ring of dueling or glory or tokozo like I have teleport to the place you want to for banking really quickly get two more items really quickly from your bank so uh, let me get two bananas I guess and then uh, perform the teleport to Trollheim again now you run out of runes and you have two spaces left so you can uh, simply pick up the two items that you dropped okay so like for the drop trick method you probably don't want to waste any inventory space while using the chip teleport tablet method so all you have to do is right click your teleport tiles make sure you have at least two and uh, select Trollheim and chip both of them so you don't waste any inventory space and then all you have to do is obviously just click it and then you'll teleport there and now you can just turn it back to a normal tablet so repair it and now you can teleport to house for emergency now the route is for both the drop trick and this because obviously they both teleport to the same place uh, all you have to do is follow the route I'm taking and go over the shortcuts and this is the fastest route to GWD um, just jump over the cliffs and the rocks and stuff and then follow the route uh, there'll be some trolls as you can see just north uh, all you gotta do is well they won't deal much damage they'll, put, you'll get, they'll get two hits on you before you pass them but if you're really bothered you can uh, protect range obviously which can halve the damage that they do so, um, yeah, just uh, either lift the boulder or squeeze past it depending on whether you have 60 strength or 60 agility and uh, just make sure to protect melee if you want at these trolls and uh, you're here. 
Um, I've already done the knight, as you can see, but the, if it's your first time, you'll need to talk to the knight. And you want to be able to, you want to get past this area quickly. So talk to the knight if it's your first time, otherwise you can't go in. Um, and then quickly go in because this area drains your stats and also hits you for a bit. So yeah. Okay guys, so the first thing you need to do when you get in is to go southeast uh, of the rope because uh, the Bandos and Armadillo minions can attack you. Now, before you can enter the boss room, where, which is where Commander Zilyana is, you need to kill 40 Saradomin followers, as you can see by this little box over here on the top left of your screen. And I've already just killed 40. So Saradomin minions include most of the things here. You can clearly tell what's Saradomin and what's not, because most of them have a Saradomin name against them, and they're blue if they don't have a name, so spiritual warriors and stuff. And there are also some Zami monsters. So you need to kill 40 of these, and I recommend that you kill these guys, Knights of Saradomin, because they have the... Uh, lowest defense against magic spells and uh, you can also kill the spiritual warriors if you have the slayer level it's 60 odd slayer I'm, I'm not sure exactly how much slayer but it's 60 odd and uh, just kill 40 of them and you'll get kill count now if you're a lower level though I recommend you switch to a single target spell rather than a barrage spell because otherwise a lot of them will attack you at once and you could get overwhelmed and also, I would recommend that you do not use area of effect abilities, which means multi-attack abilities like Chain and Dragon Breath, and also uh, the ultimate, what's it called? Tsunami, that's it. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, you need to have 70 agility, as I told you guys before, to climb this rocky wall over here, and the one back there as well. Um, and you have to, that's what you need to do to get into the boss room. As you can see, the boss room is just over there. Um, and there are tons of minions for you to kill, so you can kill them wherever you want. You need to get 40 though, so just remember that. And it's also helpful to have the Demon Horn necklace and have Soul Split on uh, while killing them, so that you replenish HP while also not using any losing any prayer points. So that's a good tip if you guys need that. Okay, so now, finally, on to the part you've all been waiting for, the tank tactics, which is also the solo tactics. So the first thing you want to do is find a high population well, so you don't have to wait a long time for spawns for respawn status uh, and then you can start getting yourself ready so first of all drink a dose of prayer renewal drink a dose of overload and also activate your aura i've just activated it and your scrimshaw if you have one and uh, you're ready uh, make sure you quick prayers on protect item soul split and torment so you are ready to go now just activate your curses and go in and Enter a boss room normally, otherwise you'll have to pay, or if you want to do hard mode, do hard mode, but it's hard, as the name suggests. Anyway, uh, what you want to do as soon as you go in is start attacking Zilyana and then build up your ability bar to uh, 200%. Uh, but before you do that, uh, you need to use the debilitate ability, because it's a very useful ability to prevent you from getting hurt a lot. It reduces damage by 50%, so that's the only threshold you use. But apart from that, just spam your basic abilities, do as much damage as you can. Uh, some people like to um, some people like to use multi-attack abilities, but there's not really much point to it. Uh, once you're at full ability bar, use metamorphosis, quickly use an adrenaline potion, and then spam your basics again until you get to 65%, not 50%, 65%, so that you can use wild magic and asphyxiate back to back before your uh, thingy runs out, before your Metamorphosis runs out so you can de deal as much damage as possible as you can see I was dealing a lot of damage and then what you do is just you use your basic abilities again and again and also re reuse debilitate and uh, Just keep repeating this process uh, But try to get your adrenaline bar up to full again and uh, watch your LP. Uh, I almost died there uh, But yeah, keep watching your LP get your adrenaline bar to full and then once the uh, once she's dead, make sure to switch to your Ring of Wealth uh, before she dies. I messed up there, I didn't switch to it, but you, you should do that normally. Switch to your Ring of Wealth and Demon Horde Necklace as, as soon as uh, she's about to die. And then you kill the minions. It doesn't really matter what order, but if you want to be pedantic about it, uh, kill Bree first because he deals a bit more damage than everyone else due to the combat triangle. So kill them as quickly as possible without using uh, threshold abilities. And by the time you kill the last one, you're a uh, your ability bar should be on a hundred percent because you want to be stalling your adrenaline which is uh, which basically means that you keep it at a hundred percent 
until she spawns a second time. So uh, there are three abilities you can use for this to uh, cycle between before you go out of combat stance. The first one is anticipation. Well, it doesn't really matter what order you do them in, but that's just use anticipation. Make sure to switch to your uh, arcane stream and your six stage circuit before she spawns again. Uh, second one is freedom and the third one would be either surge or escape so uh, just use one of those as you can see I use surge there and then she spawned now what you can do now is to use uh, use metamorphosis at the very start of the kill before you do anything else uh, so you can save some time by not having to cycle through your basics like you did the first kill and just repeat this process to be honest uh, make sure to use debilitate because it saves you a lot of food and uh, that's pretty much it um, and you don't always have to keep using metamorphosis and cycle between the abilities you can just use the basics and thresholds uh, but the kills will be a little bit slower although not too much slower just repeat this process eat when you want and uh, that's pretty much all there is to Sarah okay guys so one thing I've, uh, that you you might want to do is to wear a shield especially if you're low on food uh, what you do in this case is to rotate between your defensive abilities such as uh, resonance which is the main one that will heal you preparation which will uh, which will <laughs> as you can see can nub there uh, preparation which will speed up the cooldown of your resonance so you can use it again and also um, you can use the ability called immortality which will bring you back to life once you die uh, which is actually quite useful if, if you run out of food and uh, you think that's the end of that but it isn't really uh, as you can as you will see hopefully I will get killed uh, but anyway that's what that's what you should do and it only lasts 30 seconds by the way so make sure you die before the 30 seconds or you'll die for real and lose all your stuff forever but anyway why am I rambling uh, you can also use the reflect ability and also uh, a very good ability as I said is debilitate to reduce the damage you get by 50% and those are the main ones as well as rejuvenate which is the which is the ability that heals you 40% of your maximum life points once every five minutes or so and uh, those are the main ones I use but you can also use reflect uh, which which um, which also reduces the damage you get by 50% for 10 seconds as well as uh, as well as deflecting it back to Zilliana and her minions so that will be quite useful for extra damage on them uh, you can also use your unicorn in conjunction which will help you um, which will help you heal a, a bit more which is usually what I tend to do I, I can last about half an hour to an hour just with my unicorn and using defensive abilities without any food uh, but this time I wasn't so pro because I was talking to you guys and concentrating on that as well so uh, yeah I'm a noob in disguise guys and uh, yeah end of tactics Okay guys, so welcome to the general D mage DPS Sara setup as well as I'm going to be showing DPS with uh, with a wand and a shield. So first of all what you want to do before entering is you want to pot up and if you have a uh, aggressive familiar just be sure not when the boss does spawn to put it on a minion otherwise uh, she will turn on you. So um, another thing to note is with your quick prayers make sure that you have either protect from mage or soul split on and here you can see Zillion spawn so quickly put that on as well as augury or torment uh, if you don't have that just protect from mage and item so uh, you can see here that she's turned on me because I have not got because the tort is on uh, the it was on her so now you just wait for the tank to work it off as you can see Zended there so uh, once you've started the kill all you want to do is you want to uh, cycle through your basic abilities so you can get your adrenaline to 100% now once you've done this what you normally do is you normally go into metamorphosis uh, and then you build up your ability bar again up to 65% so you can do wild magic and asphyxiate back to back now I'm not going to do that here because it's right at the end of the kill and that would be a waste so I'm going to show you what you do uh, when you have a full ability bar right at the end of the kill and that is you stall your ability bar so that just basically means uh, that you keep it at 100% throughout the kills and there are a few ways to do this so once I've killed um, Bree 
I'll be showing you. So there are a few abilities to use. One is anticipation. So you basically, after you get the kill, you basically leave it for a bit. So until the character comes like this, and then you quickly uh, click on the stall ability. So another ability you can use is freedom. So once my character goes uh, like this again, I can go in freedom and then go to the shield again and uh, preparation is another one that you can use uh, while waiting for it to spawn so and there you go unfortunately I was a bit late on that one and finally you see you can use either surge or uh, or escape from the book now by the time you finished all of these you should already uh, have anticipation ready to use again so you just basically cycle through uh, through these abilities and uh, again I missed it so you might want to be a bit earlier until Ziliana spawns again so uh, once you've done that make sure your tort is on the minions again and then you do metamorphosis uh, one thing to note as well is uh, once you're building up and if you're receiving a lot of damage uh, uh, debilitate is a really helpful ability to reduce the damage on you so um, I would definitely recommend using that ability and uh, once you've built up you should deal a lot of damage unfortunately now I'm focusing on the on what you should be doing so um, I'm showing you guys more than actually doing it in a perfect way so um, yeah that's all there really is for this so um, just focus on building up your ability bar, stalling it and uh, getting your familiar off Ziliana okay guys so one thing that I forgot to mention while uh, DPSing is uh, if you're if you are near the end of the kill make sure to equip your uh, ring of wealth so that you have a maximum chance of getting a good drop as well as a demon horn necklace so that you can bury their bones and get more prayer points so um, if you an another thing that I uh, forgot to do is show you guys what you do with a shield so with a shield it's basically the same thing except you now have the ability to heal uh, using resonance and uh, uh, as well as the rejuvenate and you can also um, use debilitate uh, as well as um, reflect so that really reduces the damage that you receive by a ton and um, make sure to <laughs> put your tort on minions like I'm doing now because um, I keep forgetting so make sure to keep doing that as well as using uh, as, you, as well as using preparation so that your resonance comes back quickly because it reduces the ta cooldown by three seconds every time you get hit so that's really a good ability to use thanks a lot for watching guys and I really hope you enjoyed the guide and found it really useful there are six unique drops you can obtain from Commander Zuliana as you can see all of them except the hilt are dropped by her minions too but are very rare drops from her minions uh, the average accepted drop rate of a Saradomen item is somewhere between 1 in 30 and 1 in 40 very roughly. You can see in the background just a few of the drops I have gotten from here. All in all it is a really fun boss to kill either with friends or by yourself and the elusive Saradomen hilt is by far the most valuable drop in GWD not including Nex and I still need to get it after 3 years of going to Sarah GWD. But anyway, thanks for watching and please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this guide for more epic guides and content. Zenny of Tech Pro signing off. Remember guys, we're noobs in disguise. Yeah.